Good morning, good morning and welcome to Magic in Mind in which we are going to be exploring the creativity of the magician self. This part of your magical identity that is responsible for the act of creation, for the act of manifestation, for turning thought into action. So as you're arriving, if you are here with me live, I would love to hear from you when you think about um, creativity and your access to creativity. How do you feel? Are you yeah, I'm really creative? Nothing I love better than bringing new ideas through. Am I, no, you know, I'm, I'm okay on the creativity or am I, I'm so, some people, you know, they're just like, I'm just not a creative person. You know, so I'd just like to, yeah, give, give me a little sense check. When you think about creativity, how much does that resonate as being part of what you identify with, um, part of your, um, core identity and hello please do give me a, a wave hi Cara lovely to see you in disguise there I see with your with your tag name so yeah please give me a wave let me know um, is this something that you identify with strongly this some um, creativity because we're going to dig into this through the course not just of this um, week in Magic in Mind but also through the coming lunar month so in this session first of all yay for our new retitled um, magic in mind container i use the word container quite deliberately because this is really important when we understand the path of the magician is this idea of creating and containing the energy of our creativity and um and yeah so i'm very excited about this and part of the reason for the uh, the rebrand is to allow for more parts of the magical identity for us to explore them more explicitly um, we've previously been called Middle Earth Reading, so there was a little bit of a focus on the on, on the seer. And we want to get a little bit broader than that. We will be covering the seer, but this is the month of the magician. So let me see. Sue says, I really need to be creative, such a large part of my mind. So you actually feel that as part of the, the core for you, Sue, I'm sensing there. If I'm not in that creative zone, I don't feel like myself. Um, Esther, you're saying, I love creativity. It's a really big part of my life. So for some of you... It's a really um, important uh, part of what you're of what you're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this piece. I'm going to give you a little bit of a context context as to why we're looking at that this piece at the moment, why we're choosing the pathway of the magician. We're going to then look at our um, our oracle for the for this week. So what is happening with the energies? How do they support us in the pathway of the magician? And then we're going to look at our six um, spirit guide runes. So I'll be asking you to share your, your rune if you're working with a personal rune, and we'll do that a little bit um, later. So for now, let's look at the path of the, of the magician. So if you are a member of um, Suna's Star Wheel, you will receive um, today your, your full overview of the coming month ahead and working with the path of the magician and looking at all of the planetary movements and that little bit of support for digging into this energy and also um, connecting with the energy of the blue moon. So this is quite an unusual month. This is one of the reasons why we've got so much powerful power available um, to us. So some of you will, will know that um, Uranus, which we work with as Ud's chariot, has moved into Ingus, which is the seed. And so we're working with sowing new intentions, deep intentions, powerful intentions at this point. The other piece that is present for us at the moment is um, all of the planets that are in retrograde at the moment. So we have um, Frigg's chariot in retrograde. We have Odin's chariot moving into retrograde. And what this means is that the um, energies that would normally guide us when we feel like I'm not sure of what direction I'm going in, the, the leader energies, let's say, of Frigg and Odin are absent. They have left the building, which means that they're basically saying, you're in charge. And we're going to be looking at that a little bit more um, later in the month. But when we think about like being in charge, the magician self is incredibly important because we can have the, the creativity that comes through in terms of inspiration that comes through. And that can come through from the mystic that we were exploring last month. Um, I, I, I journey out, I find inspiration, I bring it back in. And that's like the spark, the flame that comes. We can get inspiration from the seer who is fully present in the moment 
and who receives information. They don't journey out to find it in the same way that the mystic does. They receive information that tells them, well, this is needed. We can get a creative spark from the healer who feels in, called to or inspired to um, make a difference in the world. So this is out of balance. This isn't working for me. And to a certain extent, the, our sage self as well, the part of us that collects information, they will be gathering in fuel, let's say, for creativity. They're not creative themselves, but they gather in that fuel. But it's the magician that mobilizes that creativity and turns it into action. Um, so one of the important pieces when we think about creativity is to distinguish between what is often referred to as creativity in the, in the Western world as being this um, inspiration that comes, like original thought, I'm creating something unique, I'm, um, my muse has come upon me. And we often think about that in terms of uh, you know, um, pieces of art, poetry, pieces of writing, you know, all of these things that come through. And originality is very, very important in that um, context. Now for the magician, that piece isn't as important. That work is done by the other parts of um, the self, the connection with that creative spark. What the, create, the magician is interested is in, in is how do I manifest that into the world? So layering in the question that I've asked you about how important creativity is to you, how much it's part of your identity, is how many um, ideas or projects or you know, sort of sparks of, oh, I, could, I could change this in some way, fall by the wayside for you? How many um, unfinished projects might you have? And I'm not necessarily talking here about unfinished projects in terms of things that you go, there's a reason why that's not finished now and I know when I'm coming back to it. The magician is fine in terms of working with time. But when you go, oh, I never quite finished that or I had this really good idea and then I missed the moment. I missed the moment for it. It didn't happen. And, and again, feeling in there and saying, okay, and, and how I, I, okay am I with that? If there are things that you regret, things that you, yeah, I'm really, a, I'm really a starter. I start stuff, but I don't finish it necessarily. Then you're going to be wanting to um, raise up and augment and empower your access to your magician self. Because the magician is all about um, structure and ritual. I heard a, um, it was yesterday, I was listening to Witch, the um, BBC podcast, and there was a, a definition of, um, it was actually a definition of a witch, but I like it for magic, and it was the um, oh, ritualised intentional transformation. So you've got the intention there, and you've got the transformation, so you've got the change, and what the magician does is it, the magician has all of that intention, they hold the intention, the intentions have been set, and, and they create the ritual that mobilizes the transformation, that allows that transformation to come through. Um, Candice was saying, when I burn out, um, I keep, um, I know you say, I keep meaning to have a note, but just to, for projects so I can keep track. And that's really interesting, isn't it? It's almost sort of saying, yes, I recognize that there are times when I might be in burnout, when my energy might not be at the right place. Uh, how do I therefore hold on to those threads, take them out of my energy field for the moment, and you know, I don't need them in my container because I have to focus all of my energy on recovery and replenishment and create a separate container for them, namely the, my notebook, that will hold them for me until I'm ready to reactivate them. And this is a really good example of where the magician self can actually be incredibly helpful for us, is um, in saying... Okay, so I need the ritualized, intentional transformation of a, um, a, a project or an idea that I was holding and I was really excited about. And then for one reason or another, I can't bring it forward at the moment. And there are many choices that we might take about that. We might say, well, I'm going to delegate it. It's not mine anyway. I'm going to give it to somebody else. I'm going to gift it to somebody else. Perhaps, it was, I'm, I'm, perhaps I've received what I need to receive from it right now. I'm going to let it go. Or we can create a container that holds that energy for us through that time. And what's important here is recognizing that there is a difference between saying, I'm gonna write my brilliant, you know, 
vulnerable, beautiful idea down on a scrap of paper somewhere and like put it in the, my in tray. And I'm going to create a, like, a notebook that's going to have um, rooms that contain the energy of these ideas within it and will keep that burning. You might have a Yera rune, a Rado rune. You, sort of, you can ask for rooms that you've got. Interesting how many people have got Dargaz. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute because that's very interesting um, today. To hold and contain the energy a little bit like you're putting your, you're putting your idea into a, a bubbling cauldron and you're placing the lid on it and then you're saying, I'll come back to it in the future time. And you might even do a little bit of a spell work around that to say you could create a bind rune with your, your Yara rune and your Rado rune and perhaps your Dargaz rune here. Seal it with the Dargaz rune and then when you're ready, I'm back in my energy place. You use those three runes to reactivate the energy of the project that's waiting for you. So this is an example of where the, the magician takes the, the situation as it is and creates the um structure in which to alchemize maintain sustain the transformation over time that is basically they, they create the ritual they create the container so for that reason the um when we think about the magician and we think about creativity it's worth bearing in mind that we aren't always talking about creativity in the terms of um, the way that it's often referred to as being these sort of original ideas. It's actually more talking about the whole creative process from the point of the idea coming through to the point where it's manifested in, in the world and how you can create those rituals and containers. So your magician does things like creating the, um, the ritual for your day when you know that you have tasks and activities that you're going to be doing every day. Your magician creates that energetic container which might include an in-tray and a computer and various other pieces, but it, the, the magician does the whole piece. So when we'll feel into the um, magician through the course of this coming month, that's what I would suggest that you, you, you focus on through this lunar cycle when the new moon comes, is what part of that magician self might I either need to activate more or use more. It might just be that actually I've, I've got a really well-developed magician self when it comes to like being at work, for example. You know, I get my stuff done and I make the change happen. It's brilliant. But when I'm at home, I'm not having the same thing. What is it that I'm doing in these different places? So, you know, what part of your magician would you like to develop and enhance through the course of this month is the question that you might want to ask. So let's look at the planetary movements then to um, help to mobilise that so we know what's, what's available for us to support that. So I've mentioned Ud's chariot in Ingus, the seed. Um, the planetary movements that we have got this week are very much about inspiration. So it may well be that through the course of this week, you're working on the ideas. How can I do more around my, you know, what, what's available to me if I work more strongly with my magician? What could be possible for me? What could be easier for me? What um, projects or ideas can I bring forth into being if I'm able to work more powerfully with my magician? Because we have um, Sunas chariot, so the sun has moved into Ansu's. Oh, see, this is my magician not working properly. The magician is not my primary magical self, the mystic is. Um, we have Suna's chariot moving into Ansu's, moving into Ansu's um, today. So this is the sun moving into the rune, into Odin's rune, the rune of um, the voice of inspiration of um, Galdra, as we call it in the northern tradition, spoken spell work. So it's the voicing of intentions, the flow of ideas. It's a really interesting rune when we think about the path of the magician because Odin is a um, what, such a wonderful archetype of the magician. And Ansu's contains within it not only the, the sort of fury and the frenzy, here we have our Ansu's rune, the fury and the frenzy and the ideas coming through with the um, the estuary, the voice, it literally sort of means like the voice of the divine, sort of what you might think of Ansu's as meaning. But it also contains within it order and um, structure within it as well. It is that full cycle of creation, that sort of manifesting piece, the creation of the of the container, or at least the idea of the container. Ansu's tends to be still focused on um, ideas, 
but it's bearing in mind that it does the piece of going, oh, you know, the, this is this new energy coming through. And it's like, right, how do I contain that? So we have Sunas Chariot in Ansu's, and then we have um, the moon, a new moon in Ansu's as well this week on the 16th. So um, we have this beautiful Ansu's energy that is coming through. And what's really important is to recognize that there is a place for that um, energy. And this is a great week for creating ideas, connecting to your magician self. But you need to be able to move forward in, through the cycle, through the cycle of manifestation, remembering the context of Urd's chariot in um, Ingu's. The energy needs to be contained and it needs to manifest. And what we are doing for the bigger picture, again, I'm going to in this a little bit more for those of you who are members of Sooner Star Wheel, is we are sowing, when we do these mini um, moments, if we have a project, so Candice, if you do your bind room for your project book, you are sowing the pattern for how you are going to be working with your magician self, your manifesting self, your change maker self, for a long period of time to come. Um, Ud's chariot is a slow moving, you know, Uranus is a slow moving planet and there is an opportunity um, through this time period to really be um, creating a new pattern. So it's almost like saying the way you do this is the way you do everything. And when you sow those seeds that you say this is the way I do this, you know, this is I, I like working in this way, then the universe has your back and will be saying okay that's fine. You know, the magician who likes to be in charge and in control has said this is the way I work. So the universe will send you um, energy to support that method of manifesting in the months and years to come. Uh, so incredibly important time for that. So you know, if you're going to be, I, if you're going to be like well behaved in terms of you know, ah, finish what I started, and all of these things, I'm going to you know, really um, <clears throat> follow the habits that I know are good for me and do the good stuff. Now is a good time to do it because you're setting a pattern that the energy will then follow through the, through the future. So that's just a little bit of a, of a context. So yes, absolutely. New ideas coming through, working with your magician self. All of the above is great with the Ansu's room, with Sunas Chariot in Ansu's and um, New Moon in Ansu's as well. But you want to be then saying, how do I create the structure? How do I bring it through? And it is better to take a small bite and complete the process of chewing and swallowing and digesting than it is to try and be, you know, bite off more than you can chew essentially at this point. You're better off saying, I'm gonna do a small project, really utilizing my magician, really taking it through from beginning to end in the way that I would like it to, in the way I'd like to operate in the world if everything worked in my favor all of the time, you know? Better to do that than to choose something really, really big and not be able to complete through this time. So you might choose just one project, you know, it could be a small project, you know, it could be, um, oh, I'm gonna reorganize my kitchen, you know, or I'm going to grow, I'm gonna grow those seeds that I intended to, or whatever it is, it's just a small thing, but do it in the way that you want to, in the way that feels good for you, so that you're embracing your magician self. Now the other planetary movement that we have um, this week, which is also on the 16th, so at the same time as the new moon, um, Tia is going to move um, into um, Kinaz. So Tia's chariot is the chariot of action, of truth, of integrity, of the warrior self. And the warrior and the magician, they work really, really well together, you know, because they both like the action piece. They're not necessarily as interested in the, you know, waiting for ideas and inspiration to come. They want the plan, you know, they like the plan, they like to be able to move forward. The magician likes the plan more, warrior is a bit like, the plan is in my body, the plan is all the practice that I've done in the past. You know, I trust myself in this moment and I do. So I want you to think about that in terms of Tia's chariot moving at the same time. So we've got the Ansu's energy that the new moon and the sun is holding, and you've got the Tia's chariot energy of Kinaz. Let me grab Kinaz for you. Here we go. So Kinaz is the rune of, um, it is actually the rune of creativity. It's the rune of, of creation, of transformation, of physical transformation. So you could think about it as the smith with their forge, crafting you know, a fabulous sword, or again, the, um, the, the magician in the cauldron putting the correct ingredients in. It's that honing of talent and that, um, and that doing piece that's important. Um, sometimes when you think about the dark side of Kinaz, all runes have a shadow side. 
Kinez manifests whatever has just happened in the moment. So Kinez is often related to um, the body. And we talk about like ulcers, bruising, um, sores on the skin as being related to Kinez. Um, temperatures, high temperatures are related to Kinez as well. There we go. Here's the Kinez rune. It's the, the torch. You might see like the heat of the torch. And it can be like the discoloration of a bruise on the skin after you've just like bumped yourself. So the bruise is, is attempting to heal the body, but it's also the place where it hurts. Yeah. And, and Kinez is the process. It is that process of transformation and change, which is not always comfortable in the moment. But the magician seizes that power and says, I'm doing it anyway. You know, and they and they go forward and, and they do it and the discoloration of the skin you know I have a um a copper bracelet that I um, made with a smith and what I loved when I made the copper bracelet it has the Ansu's um Ansu's rune it's got the Alga's rune on it but uh, when I made this um copper bracelet and I watched the metals and all the different colours that it goes through it really reminded me of the Kinaz rune and the way in which the reason that we need that container is because the object that is being um, forged is so fluid and changing and it is the power of the intention of the crafts person their practice their knowledge their trust their confidence their mastery of their tools that holds the energy and allows the um, metal which has become fluid to turn into the shape that the crafts person that the smith has envisaged in their mind and it might be sort of slightly different maybe if they're an artist you know they might still bring in that mystic side of you know I'm not quite sure how it's going to come out or they might be more of a you know I'm a, a healer and it needs to be in a particular way in order for it needs to fit my person properly so you know that, that if you it's a shoe of a horse it needs to be you know the way the horse needs it not the way that the um, mystic thinks it should be so the, the the magician has the skill and holds the intention which allows the the project to be as fluid as it needs to be to actually be as perfect as it can be let's say you know that it's um totally changed its shape and totally transformed in the moment so the magician holds the container to allow the freedom of creativity to truly come through and I think this is important because for many of us who have strong creative streaks, we can really resist that structure and that containment that the magician offers to us because we feel like, oh no, it's gonna, it's gonna constrain me. You know, it's not containing me, it's constraining me and I don't like it. But the purpose of the container is to allow for total freedom for the intention to manifest itself as powerfully as possible. So when we embrace our magician selves, we um, and the, all of the different parts of the magical self are working together, it's not a controlling act, it's a containing act. So those are our three planetary movements, two in Ansu's sort of whirling ideas, energy, starting to bring some form and some shape and some intentions, and then the Kina's energy of, of doing and of creating, already coming through through the course of this week. Okay, so let's see what people have said about their um, the magicians. Caddy's is saying, I love that. Bring the magician to everything you do. Yes, exactly. If you take away one message from this um, live, it is through the course, not just of this week, but of this lunar month, bring the magician through in everything that you do, because it will allow you to have greater access to your magician self moving forward and Sue saying I like the container of the magician as it allows me to focus the focus I need absolutely and this is where the magician is so key you know the mystic is meandering and wandering and the healer is guided to where they're needed and the seer perceives pretty much everything we'll talk about the seer a little bit more because there is a really important piece on the magician and the seer I'm not going to cover that right now unless it comes up with our runes um it might come up next week, so we're doing Dargas next week. So yes, we shall see if it comes up then. Really harnessing that um, magician self allows us to be more powerful, not less powerful, through um, where we work as as we work. So we're going to be looking at. We're definitely going to look at Ansu's. We're going to look at um, Kinas today. Let's see what else comes up for us. So we've talked a little bit about answers, a little bit of Kinez. I want to look through and see if anyone's got answers on Kinez. I'm also going to have a look at what runes you have got and we'll see how they align with the other 
um, rooms that want to come through for us. So, Esther, you have got Perthro. Hmm. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of Perthro coming through. Let's see with them with Perthro. So, Perthro is interesting because it is a container rune. Here's the Perthro rune. And you'll notice that the Perthro rune can be split, flipped on its side so that it's um, lying flat. And I often use the Perthro rune for um, uh, to create magical space because you can see it, you can create the silver circle at the, the base of your magical space there and you can see the sides coming up and holding and containing the energy and the magic. I'm just waving at my five-year-old. Yeah, I'm doing my life, okay? See you later. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Ebbing with the ebb and flow of Perthro. But actually, um, although it can be used really effectively for that, when it is in its um, upright position, it is this way, so the energy is pouring. So it's already in motion. You can't change, you can't um, control the flow of the Perthro energy. You have to flow with it, you have to move with it. And so sometimes if we have the Perthro rune, we can feel as if there is a clash of the Perthro self and the um, magician self. So what you want to do if you're working with Perthro is perhaps to experiment with working with the Perthro rune and say, okay, right now, I'm in the flow, I'm surrendering to the moment, I'm allowing myself to work with the moment, I'm looking for um, opportunities, I'm, um, I'm focused on the external world and how I can ebb and flow with it. Um, hmm, what's coming through there? So yeah, the magician is reminding me that if you have already set your intentions, if you already said, well, these are the things that I would like to be bringing through into the world, Ingus, it's Ur's chariot and Ingus, you've set those intentions, perhaps you've used that Ansu's energy to do a little bit of journaling, a little bit of intention setting for yourself. Then the Perthro rune can be great because what it can do is it can be um, the entrepreneur in you comes out, the opportunist in you comes out and said, okay, well, I wasn't expecting that, but that's what's come. And now my magician is going to ride that way for a little bit of time. And when it feels as if I'm a bit out of control, because it might do, because the magician wants to be in charge, no, it's one of the downsides of the magician. The magician wants to be in charge. You can just say, okay, just for a minute, just tipping the Perthro cauldron. And I'm breathing, and I'm pausing, and I'm remembering that everything's okay, and I'm allowing what's inside to brew, and I'm coming back, and then I'm going to go back out into the flow again once more. So you can work with the Perthro rune in that way for you, um, Esther, wasn't it? So that might be helpful for you through the course of this month if you've drawn the Perthro rune. Um, it's still a backdrop rune for us all the time because Hella's chariot is in Perthro, so that energy is always present. The magician doesn't always like it, but the magician needs it because life becomes easier for the magician when the magician says, um, yeah, you know what, there might be some opportunities outside of me, outside of my current mind, that if I'm not feeling like I need to be fully in control, I'm going to be able to work with and use. You know? So that's where that comes in. So that's your Perthro rune there. Let's see what other people have got and whether they, we are being called to work with those runes at this point. Sue, you've got Ansu's, haven't you? We'll see if any Ansu's brings anything more. Ben, um, Cara, that's you. You've got Ingus, haven't you? We've actually touched on Ingus, haven't we? So maybe we'll just have a little bit of a deeper dive into Ingus because we've, you know, it's come up again. It's a little bit of a backdrop drop rune. So whereas Perthro is a, you know, I said a Perthro can be a container rune when we work with it, when we um, tip the energy, when we work intentionally with the energy. Ingus, here we go, is is completely contained it's a completely contained energy and the way that it works is um in some ways similar to Perthro but energetically it feels very very different because we are we can create intentionally create the energy of the seed and we can nurture it and we can t tend it and at that point we aren't like in the cauldron of Perthro necessary we're not in the seed we are drawing the energy into it and containing it within and with it, the seed is external to us. But there comes a point where we either eat the seed or we plant the seed or we sacrifice the seed. It's a point of letting go and allowing what will be to be. And we either do that um, externally, we just say, and I, I give this, you know, if you're, if you're sacrificing a seed to the, the outside um, world, then you, you do so if you're planting it, you're giving it to the earth and you're saying now you're responsible for that. If you're eating it, you're saying, um, I'm committing fully to this and I don't know exactly what's going to happen. You know? 
So again, with the it's this moment at which the magician self comes in at a particular point with the Ingu's rune to create the intentions. And then they need to um, let go. And this is always part of the, the magical process is saying, I pack the energy and I pack it and I pack it in and then I let it fly free and I see what's going to happen and it might be not exactly what I had planned. So for the Ingu's rune, you are going to be wanting to think about um, divine timing um, and we're actually going to be covering that later. I think I want to say in our, well, I'm not going to say because I'm going to get it wrong, but through the course of these, this um, four week cycle, we are going to be looking at divine timing in the context of the magician. It's what is the container that you're creating? Do you remember I was saying to um, Candice about you know, if I've got an idea and I'm not ready to work with it at the moment and I can put it into my book? You could almost see the book as being a little bit like an Ingu's container and you put it there and then when you come, when you open it again, you aren't the same person. The uh, idea might be the same, but you aren't the same person. So you, in the moment, are not able to control the way that your future self will work with that energy, but the Ingu's energy has contained it in that moment. But you can look at this in other ways as well and you can say, okay, in terms of making... Um, spells you might have intentions that you say this is a really big intention but i know i'm not able to bring that into full fruition now there is a trust piece with the ingu's room that comes in so this is where um, magic in perhaps it's more classical sense that we might think about about doing magical work where we say i am creating my intention i create my ingu seed you can actually use a seed for this I whisper my intentions into the seed. I visualize the water and the earth and everything coming into it. I plant the seed, I tend it, I watch it grow. And as I do so, I trust that it's the energy that I have raised through the vehicle of this seed is also um, tethered to the energy of the thing that I wanted to bring into being. So the magician creates and crafts the spell that is contained within Ingus and then releases their control of the outcome because what they need is bigger so that could be something that is um outside of your control that you want to bring in and um yeah lots of different ways in which you can work with the ingu's rune and your magician is only in charge of that crafting of the spell piece there and there's a letting go there as well that's important you know i was talking about completing the cycle so when if we think i want to do a a, p a spell working where I am going to create an intention and I'm going to raise energy and contain it within another object and then I'm going to release that, there is a really important piece about saying, and I'm actually releasing it. I'm not going, I could do something else to make that work, I could do something else to make that work, and actually, because then we're not fully um, allowing the energy of the Ingu's rune to explode outwards in all directions. We're still trying to contain it. And that's important for those of you, you might have heard of like the manifestation, the work around manifestation, that's important for us in terms of when sometimes our magics might fail sometimes it's because we try to keep in touch with it we try to remain con retain control sorry bleh, jargon for a minute there and um, we try to con retain control and therefore we stop the magic from expanding out into the world so those are some that's some classic magic for you there lisa to play with with the ingu's rune hmm what else have we got that's coming through from people Suzanne, you've got Thurisaz. Yeah, I think we can do Thurisaz today. I'm just checking that it's not coming up later in our cycle, but it is not. Oh, the reason I think it's useful to cover Thurisaz is because we're actually moving out of a Thurisaz period of time for um, the sun. But Frigg's chariot is um, still in Thurisaz, so she's still um, prodding away a little bit. Let's find the Thurisaz room. Hmm, what does she have to say? Is she going to talk about something completely different or is she going to keep in on context with the, with the magician? So here's the Thurisaz rune. Interestingly enough, it's another one of the container runes. You'll notice that there are some runes that have um, a space that is entirely um, surrounded. So Ingus is one of them, Athala is another, Thurisaz is another. But not, not, I don't want to say there are that many that are like that, actually. Um, Wunyo is one of them. And they, there is something important there about the containment of, um, of energy. Now, Frigg is, um, at the moment, as I say, she's in retrograde at the moment, so she is um, absent, she's off um, finding her own healing, tending to her own um, needs before she comes and she resumes um, the throne. 
And what this can mean is that we have more um, conflict coming through in our lives, as well as things surfacing that might maybe we thought we had resolved or we didn't realise were an issue for us. Um, that those the protective layers peel away sometimes and that's not necessarily always a bad thing you know this is why Frigg goes down into the earth because she is an earth goddess originally um she is a she's the queen of heaven because she's married odin she's originally an earth goddess so when she goes on retreat she goes down into the earth back into her own um, space where she is both protected but where she can also be more vulnerable she can be more herself and so the Thurisa Hazrin can bring through places that require um, healing for us. And what I would suggest with the um, magician self, if you have Thurisas coming through and you're working with your magician self, it can bring through some of the real um, fears that we have around um, claiming our own power, <clears throat> around being in charge, taking responsibility. And that's not to say that, 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 that makes it sound as if there's a, there's a cowardly element to, to that. And there, there, there isn't. If we have a, a well-developed magical identity, if you have a strong um, seer, for example, you are aware of all of the different possibilities that are out there. You, know, you may feel a sense of this is the right one, but you are also you are aware that there is often no perfect solution. You know? If you are a, a healer, you can feel the um, the tension in a room when conflict is brewing and it's deeply uncomfortable, and your instincts say draw back, draw back, make it better, fix it, fix it. Um, the Thurisa's room is often that bit sort of coming through and saying. Um, Standing in your power isn't always easy. Yeah. The path that is right, if we remember um, Tia, we were talking about the warrior path, the, the path that is right is not always the one that is easy. The sacrifices that we might need to make are not always comfortable in order for the, the best to come through. And so Frigg goes into retreat because she recognises that I can't sit on the throne all of the time. Because if I do, I will think that I am entirely in charge. I will forget to be vulnerable. I will forget that every time I put myself out there and make a decision, I know that somewhere out there, someone in the world will be wounded by that decision. Even if it's the best decision I can possibly make, it will have ramifications that sometimes will be outside of my control. Sometimes they will be inside my control. And I will still not be able to please all of the people. I can only do my best. And she knows that she needs to recover from that in order to step forward into her power again. So it is that embracing of your own power, recognizing that we ourselves can have been wounded by people who wield power, um, whether they do so gracefully or not. But that doesn't mean that power in itself is bad. It simply means that the process of transformation is has many many ramifications and all we can do is our best all we can do is our best in the moment so Thura says you know it can be a little bit uncomfortable in that because it says seize your power knowing that there will be consequences to doing that and then some of those will not be pleasant either for you or other people but <clears throat> key piece Thura says and um Issa let's look at Issa we're not going to cover Issa today because we're going to look at it later when we look at more at the shadow side of the magician Issa is the rune of ice, it's the rune of um, inertia and stability. If we make a decision not to do anything, you know, if we go, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wield my magician power, just stay totally still and not do it, step into the realm of Issa, that is still a decision. And that's what Frigg would say to you if you're like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna hesitate, I'm gonna step back, that is still a decision, it's still a decision with consequences and ramifications. So. No, Thurisa sort of sniggers a little bit and says, yeah, yeah. there's the Issa rune and there's the Thurisa's rune rising out of it, the union of ice and fire, making the change, creating the transformation. And so, yeah, there is a sense of um, recognise that you're already taking decisions if you're finding it difficult, you're, even if you aren't by not taking decisions. So 
it's that intentional um, ritualized transformation that we're looking at so the intentional piece is key there <sighs> how many moons have we done with our Ansu's we've done Kines, Ingus, Perthro, Thurisas we've got one more and then we'll see what if we need to say anything more for um, for Ansu's and Kines. Candice, we've got Tewa's reversed. That's coming through later, so I'm not going to cover Tewa's reversed, but obviously we've talked a little about Tears Chariot and Kina's. Um, the only thing I would say for you, Candice, probably is that, you know, we were talking about the Bind Dream book, that's probably really sensible because there is a sense of um, the best action that you can take at the moment, the best decisions that you can take at the moment are decisions not to take decisions. And the Tewa's Dream is not flying forward, it is burying itself in the earth, like Freak at this point. So, yes, I really might want to um, have a go at that if you can and say, what am I going to set to one side and say no to? Christina says, creative is a massive part of my rune practice. The elements of the story really resonate. Oh, good. I'm really glad, Christina. Um, Lisa, morning, everyone. Very creative, but rather like Da Vinci, prone to procrastination. Yeah, and interesting. I've had one of my um, really, one of my teachers long ago said to me, she said, there's no such thing as procrastination. She says, there's always something underneath that. And I wonder with Leonardo da Vinci whether there's a, um, whether that was part of his energy cycle. And when we procrastinate, it might be that we don't have enough information. It might be that we don't have enough energy. It might be that our attention is divided in too many different places. It might be that we haven't actually fully committed to the thing that we, that we want to do. So the question becomes, what does your, what will your magician put in place to help you to um, determine what the source of that um, so-called procrastination is you know, in order to, to move through it? Procrastination is a judgment word that places the, um, it says not, there is something in this, in the field that I'm working in right now, there's something in the structure or the energy um, or the intention that needs to be tweaked or needs to be allowed to run its course before the timing is correct for this project. And it says, actually, it's just me. I'm a procrastinator. I'm totally to blame. So thank you for bringing that, Lisa, because that's a really key um, piece here, is that we can see the magician and the procrastinator as being sort of in, in opposition to each other. But actually, the procrastinator might have something quite important to say to the magician around have I raised enough energy in order to complete this project or is there something that's missing at this point that needs to come in and again this is where all of the different parts of the magical stuff work together because you could well be need to call on the seer um, to say okay what, what's the choices that need to be made or to get that bigger perspective or the mystic to journey out and find the missing piece that you know that's there or the healer to say actually I'm the, the, the self-care piece is important or there's somebody who's not able to do this project with me I actually need to collaborate with well, you know my most potent magic will come through and I'm collaborating with somebody else so um so yeah let's maybe make if Leonardo da Vinci look how much he made I didn't know he was crying for procrastination but I love that you know brilliant then we're all okay Suzanne creative energies are my core self indeed yes Christina you've got some ag agreeing there oh, with the procrastination piece and I hope that's re relevant for you too Lisa you had Dargas we're going to cover Dargas um, next week I can feel the seer coming through a little bit there as well so we're interesting maybe we'll be coming back to that piece on procrastination because Dargas is an interesting one when you think about procrastination mm. Just so maybe this week you have a little bit of a play with that yourself. What does the Dargas dream might not that have to offer you? And then we'll see if we can dig back into that next week. Maggie, you've got Bacano. Hmm. Yes, why not? Let's choose Bacano then as our final, our final um, room to work with. Bacano, another container room. There you go. The magician just wants to work with the container room some. Um, today don't they so the Bacano rune has got um two containers within it which I always find really fascinating you know that it's this room with two containers bear with me I'm just flicking through because it's deciding not to it's like Dargas's Dargas rune it's what you notice it's got two containers the Bacano rune comes earlier in the rune row with its two containers here the rune of the divine feminine 
Um, I'm, fe- I'm feeling the gentleness of the Bacana rune at this point, which is interesting because, because the magician can often feel like a... It's because it's very associated with willpower, with determination, with tenacity, with grit, you know, all of these things um, that, that, that come through um, when we think about the, maybe the classic version of a, of a magician with a wand, you know, um, and, and quite a masculine energy as well. Tell me if that resonates with you as well. When you think about a magician, what comes to mind? What comes to mind in your your imagery? So I think this is why Bacano has come through because it's that reminder that um, we've talked about Odin as the magician. But I think Bacano wants to remind me the the feminine, the birch tree, the new, the earth. You know, it's coming through of um, Freya. We talked a little bit about Frigg. We talked a little bit more about Freya. So she is also a magician. She is also a manifester. She is, you know, par excellence the um, the the. the 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 opposite in some ways or the complement to Odin in terms of uh, the embodiment of how we can work with the different aspects of the magical identity to create change and she uses her magician when she needs to no absolutely she is very you know when she has decided that she's going to get something done she will do it she's also an opportunist as well but what she is um, offered to me is a just a vision for a moment of instead of the magician as maybe somebody you know, like like a wizard type, or a, you know the black coattails and top hat and things. But the 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 magician, as perhaps in a more feminine mode, sitting outside um, like a hut or a cottage with um, with a spindle, spinning and chanting. Perhaps the runes, perhaps the runes that you're working with at the moment into the thread. I used to love doing this when I was, um, I haven't done it for a while, I've le- less, less time for spinning now that I have the, the children, but before I had children I used to spend a lot of time spinning and I would create magical threads and I would sing the um, runes into the threads to charge the threads and that is an act of, of, of magic, that's an act of weaving the energy, you might say like the mystic energy or the healer energy that you're drawing up wherever you're drawing it from maybe connecting with the energy here it might be the earth energy of the Bacano rune or saying actually what I'm connecting here to is um, I'm in spring because Bacano is the rune of spring so in spring you might create some magical thread that is your Bacano thread and you say every time I need to like initiate a new project I need to bring through new ideas I need that energy of spring to come through I will have this thread and I can cut a piece of it and I can, you know, um, put it around my wrist. You know, if you were to do that with the Ingu's rune, for example, we were talking about that um, for you, Candice, you could seal your book with your Ingu string, tie it, and then when you unseal it, you're releasing that Ingu's energy. So you can work with that way. And it's a very, it's like a natural magic way of working um, that can be very, very simple. You know, I am raising the, this energy for this intention and I am placing it within this thread and I know that I'm going to be using it for this purpose moving forward. can be a really, really lovely um, act of magic to work with. So the Bacano Rune is reminding us that um, the path of the magician is not the sort of, um, it's not just technology and um, like flashy stuff and what's the word I'm looking for? Quite set. Mm. analytical, rational, um, dividing things up, you know, it, it can also be quite natural and organic and evolving and moving as long as you have that intention and you, you have that action, you know, with the, the, the spindle, using your, your keen as creativity to bind your magic into the thread is a, another act of, of magic so you can you can use more natural magics you can do magics with your cooking you know with anything that is is an act of creation you can do magics with the breath you now all of these things it's about that ritual intentional transformation that's what we're looking for in the moment so hmm Anything else to come through with um, Ansu's? I think Ansu's is quite pleased that we had that discussion just then about recognizing that it's not just that the magician contains within um, the, themselves the uh, the ideas coming through and the structure and shaping the structure. I don't know about you, but I am somebody who gets really excited by a project plan. 
you know, I, I may be alone here. Maybe Excel spreadsheets, not so much, but you know, I love it when it's all laid out and I can see how everything's gonna form and it feels like I've created a, a magical container for my work when I have my like year ahead plan. That feels like an act of magic to me. Um, and the, the ordering, the structure, the creativity, you know, that, you, that comes after the ideas. How do I implement this plan? What do I need in order to implement it? Because there's another key piece. But also bringing in the different um, archetypes of the magician there that, we, that you can play with. So if you have Ansu's this week, you might also want to be looking at um, figures that you know who speak to you of the magician and what it is when you think of them, what is it that they're calling you to notice about the magician self. So um, Gandalf from The Lord of the Rings has been coming up for me quite a lot and reminding me that a lot of the work that he does is, is unseen in terms of, you know, if you think about The Hobbit, I'm going to bring together this band of, um, of dwarves and I need like, this, other, this other element and he brings in like Bilbo Baggins. And again, when they have the quest for the ring, he's like, what is it that's required? You know, to, to the, the I, what container of people, of a group of people do I need to create and put together in order for this mission to be successful? He doesn't go, I'm gonna do it all myself. You know, he creates the structure. He creates the fellowship of the ring in order to bring about the, the alchemy. So he was, reminding, he was reminding me of that, that, um, the part of the magician can be quite lonely and collaboration is an absolutely key element of it and again that's something that we're going to be discussing in a little bit more depth so those are our runes i don't think anything else wants to come through for key now so we're, we're fine with them lovely to see you oh Carly was saying that you can't see me you can only see the comments i'm sorry about that well hopefully you'll be able to see the video um, Elaine, you've got Yera. Yera is going to be coming up later. That is that you probably want to be thinking in the long term. And again, thinking about that, if I'm setting the energy now, what might, it's that connection into the future. It's saying, I don't need to have achieved everything at this point, but I want to have energetically sort of laid the, the path. You know, it's like the this way bit, the, um, the, the, the placing of the foundation stone, you know, something that says, yes, I'm moving uh, forward and I'm doing that in a practical way that will that will help. Lisa a Leonardo actually only ever finished one painting The Last Supper. Oh, okay so yeah so there's there's an unfinished piece there interesting interesting. Maybe saying my new star for Silver Birch well that's so perfect isn't it for Bacano. Christina you've got algas so yeah we're not going to be covering that today there's that spirit guidance piece coming in you might want to look at what we talked about with um, Perthro a little bit there. Uh, as well, Sari, you've got Uras and Thurisas, we're not doing Uras, but we've done Thurisas and Uras will be coming up in the next, one of the next three sessions. Mm -hmm. Maybe the singing really resonates with me, you've got the thread and you spin too, you're not very good at it, that's okay, you don't have to be. No, this is one of the joys about spinning for magical purposes, is um, it doesn't always have to be perfect, you know. Sometimes the, the nobbles and the bobbles and the place where the, the thread gets a little bit um, thin tell you things, you know? It speaks to your seer there. So, wonderful. And this is Magician Wizard tends to feel male to me, but I also end up with Mickey Mouse and Fantasia. Interesting. I think we we watch that. I haven't seen that for a long time. Certainly something there. You might want to look there, not just at um, the role that Mickey Mouse has to play, but also at the sorcerer, you know, who leaves the apprentice alone with all the stuff in the first place. What does that tell you about him? how the magician works? What lessons does that have to offer to you there? Fabulous. Um, Candice, I love my notebooks and lists. All of these things are tools of the magician. One of the most powerful things that you can do at this point is to recognize that although it is fabulous and wonderful to have a wonderful wand, yes, I do have a collection, and a wonderful staff, any tool that you use can be claimed as part of your magician's magical toolkit. Your knife and fork could be part of your magical toolkit. You know? All of these things are, can, be, can be used. We can create intentional ritual around a tool that empowers it to stop simply being an object and start channeling 
the transformation that we are looking to create into the world. So lovely to see all of you. Carol, I can see you've got Harglads. We are not covering Harglads today, but it will come up in the future. Thank you so much for joining me for this first session of um, Magic in Mind. And I will see you all very soon. Please do, if you have been watching this on the recording, do hashtag replay, share your rooms, keep the conversation going in the hearth space. Really excited about this um, month ahead of working with the magician. <laughs>